You may have seen someone shrug and say, survival of the fittest, when their friend was about to do something obviously risky. But what does that really mean? What does fitness have to do with survival? We're going to find out in this episode all about natural selection. You might be familiar with the idea of evolution, that species change over time, like a lot of time. But how? What is the mechanism? One of the major mechanisms is natural selection. Natural selection is the process through which living organisms adapt and change. Individuals in a population have variations or differences in their inherited traits. Fur type, neck or horn length, seed production or coloration are just a few examples. These trait variations are due to differences in the individual's genetic makeup or their genes. Some of an organism's traits make it more likely to survive and reproduce in its environment. These are called advantageous traits. These types of traits often make organisms better at finding food, avoiding predators, and finding a mate. And some traits make an organism less likely to survive and reproduce in its environment. These are called disadvantageous traits. They are traits that may make an organism more likely to be seen by predators or less likely to mate. Organisms with advantageous traits are likely to reproduce and have more offspring. And these offspring often inherit their parents' advantageous traits. As a result, the advantageous traits become more common in the population over multiple generations. This process is called natural selection. So how do these variations happen in the first place? Through mutations. Mutations are changes in the structure of the molecules that make up genes, called DNA. So mutations can be random, when replicating cells make an error while copying DNA, or happen as a result of environmental exposure to harmful things like chemicals or radiation. Mutations can be harmful, neutral, or sometimes helpful, resulting in a new advantageous trait. So what does survival of the fittest mean? In terms of natural selection, an animal that is fit is well adapted to its environment. But realistically, there's also a degree of randomness that comes into play. So the best adapted animal won't always be the one to survive. Like the best adapted tree in an environment could get struck by lightning, or a coconut could fall and hit the best adapted monkey on the head. But on average, and over time, the ones that survive are the fittest, the ones that are best adapted to their environment. Common traits in a population doesn't mean that natural selection made it that way. Nearly every population is full of neutral variation. Most of the variation of traits have no impact on survival or reproduction. Like all trait differences, neutral variations pop up through mutation and recombination. And because they don't affect reproduction one way or the other, sometimes they stick around, like the fur coloration of cat litters. It is possible, though, that if circumstances change, a variation that was once neutral can become harmful or helpful. Whether something is good or bad, helpful or harmful, all depends on circumstances. An organism's environment sets the rules or conditions for success. When circumstances change, a trait that was helpful can suddenly become a disadvantage. For example, a brightly colored butterfly might have great success at reproducing in an environment with few predators, but in a field full of birds, it might not last a day. Because environments are always shifting, it can be helpful for a population to have individuals with a wide range of trait variations. Let's take a look at a quick example to help us put everything together. Let's say here in this field there is a species of wildflower of different colors and other variations. Let's see how the population might change over time. If you're still here liking this video, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. So far, we've learned for natural selection to happen, we need three things. A population 
a group of the same species that can reproduce together, heritable trait variation. These are trait differences that come from differences in genes. We've already seen that there's a different colors trait, but let's say that there's a big thorns trait and a many seeds trait, and trait differences in individuals that affects their chances in reproducing, since seeds are how most plants reproduce. Let's take a look at the more seeds trait. On average, plants with this trait pass on their genes and the resulting trait on to more offspring. More seeds equals more plant babies. That means in the next generation, the more seeds trait will be a little more common, and plants that make less seeds will be a little less common. Less seeds equals less plant babies. Very technical, I know. This pattern will continue with each generation. Over time, this difference will cause a shift to happen at the population level. The field will be more saturated with the more seeds plants. This trait affects reproduction directly. Natural selection also works on traits that affect reproduction indirectly, especially traits that affect survival. If an individual can survive long enough, it can reproduce. The big thorns trait we mentioned earlier could work this way. Remember, the environment sets the rules. So if we introduced deer and rabbits, the more seeds trait might be less effective. What is even on me? I don't know how long this guy has just been chilling on my head. Come on, get, go on. He's cool looking. Look. Can you see him? All right, you gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. Thorns don't affect reproduction directly, but plants with this trait are less likely to be eaten by the deer and rabbits. This gives the plants with the big thorns trait a reproductive advantage. They pass their genes and this trait to their offspring. Over generations, big thorns become more common in the population. Here are some key things to take note of. Number one, natural selection depends on the environment. Number two, natural selection acts on existing heritable variation. The ingredients, so to speak, have to already exist in the parent organism's genes. Number three, the original source of new gene variants that produce new heritable traits such as fur colors is random mutation. Number four, Natural selection doesn't favor traits that are somehow inherently superior, only that are beneficial, helping an organism survive and reproduce more effectively than its peers in a specific environment. Number five, traits that are helpful in the current environment may actually be harmful in another. Number six, common traits in a population doesn't mean that natural selection made it that way. Nearly every population is full of neutral variation. And number seven, no individual can suddenly change their heritable traits, no matter how much they might want or need to. So the next time you hear someone say survival of the fittest, just remind them that it depends on the environment. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next.